Okay, good morning. It is a Sunday morning. Hope you're having a good weekend. A lot of football on today. I don't know if you're into that. My fantasy league is over. My I was killing too. I was killing. And then last couple of weeks, I lost. Oh, Camara. I lost Alvin. So anyway, Mount Shasta in the distance. It is Sunday. It is a beautiful day. And here's the deal. This week, we are dealing with temperatures in, throughout the state, but let's just, I'm using the central part of California, uh, mid-60s, upper 60s, no rain, no snow, surf stays kind of large and dangerous, kind of cold overnight. There it is. That's the whole deal. Uh, Mount Shasta, 14,163 feet high. I did climb it once with my lovely wife, and we went up, I guess, um, where's Avalanche? I think this is Avalanche Gulch right here. That's the climbing route right there. And you kind of, that's Red Banks. And then there's Misery Hill. And it's it's a climb. Like I was young and it's, I'm in pretty good shape. It's like, yeah, you know, got up in the dark, climbed it. Not one to mess around with weather. We got into some nasty weather. We had to come down a little early. But um, Mount Shasta, one of the, just the beacons of the state of California. Uh, okay, so... News this week is this. I don't usually do scary stories, but this is a scary story. It's uh, This was a shark attack or a shark encounter, it would be called, on the 31st up at a, a place we used to serve. I'm not going to name the place. It's a kind of a secret spot. The local Marin guys know it. You probably know it if you surf at all. Uh, and I... It's terrifying. Uh, he was hit by a shark. Now, what sharks do? If you've ever been, a, if you ever fished, like um, fly fishing, you fly fishing, you throw a fly, in. a lot of times the fish, the bigger trout, especially the older, smarter ones, are like, I don't. That doesn't look like real. So they'll flash it or they'll bump it, and to see what they got right before they go in for the bite. And more often than not, there's days of the fish, that's all they'll do is bump because they're very suspicious of fishermen. Well, sharks are the same way. Sharks are like, what is this thing? This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't look like. And so they'll come. This In this case, this shark was said to be, he says 15 here. I saw 13 foot. But it's a big shark. <laughs> they're fat. And just to come out of the water and slap you um, and bump you. And then they go, ah, I don't want that. And so it's sort of a, I think often it's a juvenile thing for sharks. I think the younger ones aren't sure what they got. But either way, I know guys that this has happened to. I also know one, two, three personal firsthand accounts from friends. I've never been in the water with this. But I know three guys have been bit by sharks that have been bit by sharks that have been bit by sharks. I know. Someday I'll go into the stories. I don't like to tell the stories because... Two of them are the most terrifying stories you could ever imagine. They are every bit as scary as a Jaws story. And you may have your own stories. As a matter of fact, I'd be interested in if you've ever been bumped. I have seen whites in the ocean, but not that many. Not that many. I've been chased out twice in 45 years by people. People, I, I didn't even see the dorsal fin. We were down at Point Conception once and then once up in San Francisco. And then I actually saw a white shark off near beach attack a seal, which was terrifying. This was just a little while ago. So white sharks, yeah, that's what they're doing. They're bumping you to see if you're if you're for real. So anyway, um, someday we'll get into those stories. It's uh, the red triangle. Let me see if I can draw that. I can draw this in. Okay, so here's here's Bodega Bay up here. Here is Monterey Bay, and that's the red triangle. That's where. Most of the shark attacks, in my understanding, most of the shark attacks occur. I, I don't. I feel like Australia would have more, but certainly in the United States, I should check that. I don't know if it's all worldwide, but in the United States, white shark attacks. Okay, Mount Diablo. It is three thousand eight hundred forty-nine feet tall. It's beautiful. We talked about brewers up and down California. If you spend some time on Mount Diablo, I suggest if you are if you're watching this, you're probably a um, a California historian type, what's going on here. That's the one of the best books to read. Up and Down California. It seems boring, but it's not. He was with the Whitney survey crew, Mount Whitney, um, in, in the late 1800s. Okay, so the beach, surf is coming up. Well, it's actually come down a little bit, and it is surfable, especially Santa Cruz, but it still stays big. So Ocean Beach is going to be sketchy, it's going to be good conditions, but it's not for the faint of heart. It's eight to 10 feet. That means you're going to have solid 
10 foot sets, which could be solid 13 or 14 foot faces with not a lot of tide move and the tide's in pretty good spot. So high risk for surfers this week. There's the high surf warning along the coast that is in kind of that blue. Here's a dense fog advisory that is hoisted for Modesto South and then offshore here, you've got a small craft advisory, which is pretty typical. All right, so now we move on to the weather stuff. We've got clouds. Nothing's gonna happen for a while. What I'm gonna show you in the computer model is dry, 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 right through like about the 19th to the 20th of January. And then something breaks loose. In the meantime, it looks like we got a little valley fog here, right? Those little strips of valley fog, no coastal fog. This is the visible map from, um, it's, a, it's linked directly to my links page. And I, I want you to, this is the map I think is probably the most important. It's not a map, it's a satellite image, but it's one of the, it's the most important because it shows you what's going on. Like I, I can look at the models, we'll look at those, but this is what's happening right now. This is your Sunday. What are you gonna do? You're gonna get out and enjoy it? I would, I mean, look at that, look at the cloud cover, look at where you are. If you got a little fog in the valley and you're, let's say you're in Rockland and you got that fog, it's gonna be gone in the next 10, 20 minutes. That fog is clearly going away. So you can make a lot of assumptions from a visible satellite image. All right, so we're gonna get right into it. Let me take this down here. This is the big picture. I'll put a circle around us here. This is uh, rainfall chances, how much rain we're gonna see over the next, up to the 20th. So what I'm really trying to show you, so yellows and reds represent about one and a half to two inches of rain. So it's cumulative. So here we are, we're into Wednesday. You see where we live under that circle? A lot of rain up in the Pacific, out in the Pacific, up in Alaska, down south, down east, down north Louisiana. But look at us, we are dry as dry can be as that ridge of high pressure protects us. Here we are now into the 15th of January, 15. Now things are starting to break loose here. You see some greens coming in. This is the 18th of January. I'm still looking at California. Uh, are you looking at it? Cause it's dry. We're dry. I mean, it's a model, but this is January 18th. This is January 19th and there it comes in. So somewhere around the, in this case, it's the 21st. So somewhere around, as far as this model will go out, somewhere around the 21st, Northern California gets some rain. Southern California gets nothing. That's a little ominous because that, this is a long, this is a, they're down to 5%, 2% of rainfall average in Southern California. So that is, I haven't seen that before. Not with this much, not with this much rain north with Marin County watershed, 180% of rainfall in San Francisco. You know, everybody's over a hundred percent until you get down to Monterey and everything just drops off. Okay, so we come in close. This is the same look, but close up. Boom, 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 boom. Going through time, going through time, going through time. There comes the 20, 21st. And even then, you can see it's not a lot of water. I'm looking close. It's only like a tenth of an inch, quarter of an inch of rain. And then Southern California, not a thing. I right know, it's a little concerning. Um, this is from Top of Palisades. And you're looking kind of west. These numbers at the top obviously representing degrees, right? So kind of westerly direction. So if the sun were to set, you'd see it setting up here further to the, or further to the south, pardon me. And you're looking out towards the coast. And I bet you on the right day, you can't see from here, but I can see if I'm on top of Mount Diablo, I've, you can see the Sierra Nevada, certainly. And I think uh, on a day up in the, in the mountains on deck today, you could probably see Mount Diablo. Okay, so here is Ocean Beach. See how thumpy it is? Definitely dumpy. Uh, waves are running eight to 10 feet. Swell is, I think I wrote it down, six feet, 12 seconds. Six feet, 12 seconds. So the interval's shrunk, the size is shrunk. And when the interval shrunk, shrinks, it's the, the interval is between crest, crest to crest. So wave to wave, those two white water waves. So those are two waves. The interval is the difference, the, the room between those. So when that shrinks, you notice how there's more waves, boom, 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 not 20 second intervals, not 30 second intervals, but what did I say, 12 second intervals. So they're close together. 
So it makes getting out really hard. It makes get you know it's hard. Close interval waves, especially when they're big, are brutal, especially on the inside sandbar. Uh, and what happens in Santa Cruz, as you know, you know what happens, right? The waves refract around the point. They clean up and they become. I, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but we, the, the wave the waves come in like this and they start to turn and they turn in. Look how much cleaner it gets when it comes into the inside. Not only is there a lot less wind but it grooms and kind of takes some of the energy because waves aren't just on the surface, they're underneath the water too. They reach down and they touch the bottom. And when they touch the bottom and they, they start to slow, and when they slow, they start to bend. That's refraction. And they bend and they turn in and that when you slow a wave down, makes it easier to catch, makes it cleaner, makes it kind of stand up a little bit, right? Pushes it up. So the steamer lane, probably one of the better point waves in the world, I think. It is uh, Soda Springs right now. It says the temperature was, this morning was 26 degrees. Let's take a look and see what's going on up on the hill. And we got a picture of, looks like summertime. Wow. Beautiful day. I just read something online about, they're talking about, because I guess Tahoe right now is super impacted by um by everybody who goes up there now right and vrboing and what have you this is uh, down in the this is down towards uh north lake uh tahoe downtown kind of um but there it's there's so many people up there during these holidays and you know i told you this once ski resorts i know this because i have friends who work and run ski resorts or kind of run them they basically um get all their money in this holiday period, these last two weeks, not some of their money, almost all of it, all their profits, all their come this two weeks. So everybody goes up skiing, right? And if they don't, the, the ski come, they, you know. So anyway, a lot of beefing around up in Lake Tahoe about traffic and the locals are mad and people go up there and disrespect the place. And it's true of any tourist location, you know, you just get people who don't, aren't from there and then maybe they don't understand the roundabouts, things like that. So if you're going to Lake Tahoe, and I know you, this isn't you, but just just be, be as kind as you can because the locals are just getting punished, especially during this two week period. Okay, so what did, I get? what did I say? I said we got no rain for a long time, so just go do. Surf's a little dangerous along the coast, so crab fishermen, please be careful. Um, it's going to get cold in the mornings. We're going to see some freezing temperatures overnight. Might even see some frost advisories and freeze watches and warnings. And then, um, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be dry for a while. And temperatures are going to be mid sixties, upper sixties. I don't know about seventies, maybe down by Monterey. Okay, there you go. That's the forecast. I'll see you back here tomorrow.